Okay, God bless you, people of God. Um, I come again. Uh, there is. I just want to make this video quickly concerning the New Testament scripture. Father, in the name of Jesus, I plead the blood of Jesus. I cover the atmosphere in the blood of Jesus. I pray, O oh God, that you let the law of truth be in my mouth and let me speak the word of truth in Jesus' name. Amen. And um, people of God, I want to say something concerning the New Testament scriptures. I. I have been talking about Paul's um, episodes and um, many people believe me, many people don't believe me, but I have scriptural proof, which I have always pointed out. There are a lot of landmarks. Um, I want us to understand that the word of God, everything you see in the Bible is not the word of God. Some people may doubt it or not. At least you hear when Paul will say, I, Paul, say. For instance, I, Paul, say, if you circumcise, Christ means nothing to you. You know, that's Paul speaking, not the Holy Spirit, not inspiration. And he will at times will say and that he is speaking by himself, not the commandment he received or whatever. So that at least proves that um, not everything you see in the Bible is, um, is the word of God. And also where he said that um, he wished that those who, are, who persuaded to circumcise will emasculate themselves will emasculate themselves that's not the word of god that is paul the extreme way paul was fighting against circumcision he said if you are circumcised christ means nothing to you but we know that circumcision is god's seal is god's seal um of the covenant he has with the family of every that covenant is a seal between god and man consigning abraham's seed because God has one family on earth, that is the seed of Abraham through Christ. Anyone that doesn't come through Christ into Abraham's family, nope, is gone to hell. So, um, so I want us to come to look into, with a matured mind, look into the New Testament scriptures and to see um, some things that... You know, I, as I always say, I studied English and literary studies in the university. And that makes me to, whenever I study or whenever I read things, I I also have the designing of spirit, designment of spirit. So when I read, I kind of look, I'm a kind of critical. So when something sounds off, I try to understand why it's sounding off. Probably if you are a Bible student, you must have read things that contradict things you know. For instance, when I was um, in the university, I remember during a convocation, somebody asked um, um, when a new students coming and during um, matriculation, and somebody invited me to preach to her kinsmen. When I came to her kinsmen, I didn't know that a pastor was there. And I was preaching. I said that God's law has been abolished. The man said, no, it's been fulfilled in Christ, not abolished. I was ashamed of myself. I said, oh, come on, come on, come on. Then since then, I keep going on. You read scripture. You read Christ. You read Paul. Okay. It's like, though, I don't know whether I can say whether we are programmed to see the contradiction and still accept it. I don't know. We see contradiction in the scriptures, and still we accept. Some people actually have left the faith because of the contradictions. But there are many reasons for the contradiction. First, by Bible translations, and I even removed and added some Bible translations. So, like when Jesus said, "I am not coming yet to the feast," and yet He went yet to the feast. You see some scriptures that I'm not coming to the feast. That yet makes the difference. So they say that Jesus lied. You will see it that Jesus lied in New NIV or some other scriptures. But in King James, he said, I am not coming yet. I'm not going yet to the feast. When his brother said that he should come to the feast, he said, I am not going yet to the feast. But some scriptures will say, I am not going to the feast. Yet he went. So he said, I'm not, he didn't go when his brothers were expecting him to go because the Jews wanted to kill him. So he went in his own time. He follows the leading of the Holy Spirit. He said, I'm not going yet. He will go when he was led. You see, so some people will say Jesus lied. So that is another thing. 
So some people will say that the scriptures are contradicting themselves. Uh uh. It depends on first of all translations. Number two. But besides that, when you read scriptures, you will see that Jesus will say something else. Paul will say something else. Jesus will say, follow me. Paul will say, follow him. And Jesus will say, the commandments are not abolished. Paul will say, it's abolished. Christ is dead. So if you come to Pauline people and you say Jesus that the commandment has been abolished, a commandment is not abolished, they will call it heretic. I, I, it happened to me. Then another, another thing is, you say things in the scripture like in my among my people in Igbo land, Nigeria, in Igbo land, there is a, a group that is agitating for to succeed from Nigeria. Igbo people, Abiafra. And you hear them say that Jesus said, I did not bring peace to the earth. And these people are slaughtering Igbo people. They're slaughtering themselves. And they say, after all, Jesus said, I did not bring peace to the earth. You see it in the Bible. Jesus said, think not that I bring peace to the earth. I do not bring peace, but sword. That's not what Jesus said. That is what is written in the, in the gospel. Then I said, okay, how would Jesus be called the prince of peace? And he said, I did not bring peace to the earth. I bring first one. And people are slaughtering. And if you go down to the history, back to the history, I learned that that is the scripture that also enabled some of the slaughterings by, is it crusaders? I don't know who they people, they were slaughtering people based on that scripture. But then, what I'm trying to say here is, or oh, okay, let me go again. Or oh, where they say that Jesus caused a victory. Remember, Jesus asked us not to cause. We don't. James said, "Can you use it, that? We should not use the same mouth to use to praise God or and cause." So why would Jesus cause? I eventually found out that it's not just Jesus that cause. It's Peter. Peter and Jesus rebuked him that this is not the season for the victory. So why would Jesus cause a victory? I have always asked, why would Jesus cause a victory? And then it is said that it is not the season for the victory to bear fruit. And yet Jesus caused the victory for not bearing fruit. That he was hungry. Would you not look to you like somebody who is hungry and then out of hunger he will cause a victory? No, that's not the character of Jesus. Jesus will not do that. So, because Jesus is called the Prince of Peace. So why would he say he didn't bring peace on the earth? So, and so, and again, why would the word of God commend Daniel for not eating the king's meat and all those things that would defy him? And why would God give lists of food to eat and food not to eat? I said, these are unclean and these are clean. And then Jesus comes to say that it is not what enters the man that defies him, but what comes out of him. Personally, God has been pushing me away from certain foods. And yet, why would Jesus say that not, not what enters the man that should defy it's not what Jesus said. Why would Jesus ask you to make friends with mammons of unrighteousness so that when you fail, they will take you to their everlasting, um, everlasting, whatever, habitation? Hello? Do we put sense when we read? Jesus saying, make friends quickly with mammons of unrighteousness so that when you fail, they will bring you into their everlasting. If you think that I'm lying, let's just see. Make friends with mammons of unrighteousness. That is uh, Luke six sixteen nine. Luke sixteen nine. And I say unto you, make to yourself friends of the mammon of unrighteousness, that when you fail, they may receive you into everlasting habitation. Hello. Where is trust in God? Where is um, uh, you will not serve two masters? You will not serve God and mammon. Where is mammon of unrighteousness? Where is the everlasting habitation? Hell. So why would Jesus make you ask you to meet yourself to hell? So that when you fail, hell will receive you. Why would that be the scripture? Then, I, I keep searching. Uh, uh, why would Jesus say this? You know, when we read these things, we just say, okay, 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 it's the word of God. Bam, 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 bam. Why? I have come to understand. Then I saw this gospel of the Holy Twelve. Gospel of the Holy Twelve or gospel of perfect life. And I began to read it. I just had an open mind. I'm going to read it. 
Then I realized, see what Jesus said in some places. Let me see if I... Okay, let me read some things that Jesus said. There are many things which I have to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. How about the Spirit of Truth, whom I will send unto to you from above shall guide you into all truth and bring all things to your remembrance whatever i have said unto you from above shall guide you into all truth and bring all things to your remembrance whatever i have said to you now he said after that he said they remove a lot of things from the gospel this thing i read now is in the gospel that after my departure there will arise the ignorant and the crafty and many things which will they ascribe unto me that I never spoke. Many things which I did speak will they withhold. And but the, the day will come when the clouds will be rolled away and the sun of righteousness shall shine forth with healing in his wings. I believe that day has been rolled away from me. See? So Jesus said it, that many things... So, now, why would Jesus... Now you ask yourself again, why would Jesus say, um, come to restore the garden? Because Jesus came to restore the garden of Eden. Um, Jesus came to restore everything on their original order. That's why they call him second Adam, right? He came to restore the garden. In the garden, there was no eating of meat. There was no eating of fish. Fish and meat were given to man after the Noah's flood. And that time, age of man had been reduced to 120. From the people who used to live 900. But in the millennium, the Bible says that those who live 100, it will be like nothing. It's like a day. Because man will live long. Because death will be abolished. Now man, Jesus came to restore that garden. That's what Jesus came to do. Now, why would Jesus eat fish? Then I read, as I keep going, these things are falling in naturally. As I was reading and going, First of all, when Angel Gabriel met Mary, he asked Mary, after telling her about the conception, he said to Mary, therefore you shall eat no flesh, nor strong drink, for the child shall be consecrated unto God from his mother's womb, and neither flesh nor strong drink shall you eat. He, he eats. Neither flesh nor strong drink shall Jesus eat, nor shall razor touch his head. That means Jesus will be a Nazarite. Now, Elizabeth, John the Baptist, John was also the uh, was also not to drink strong drink, eat flesh. They said that John ate locusts and wild honey in the wilderness. John ate locust beans. I, re I read it from the Gospel of uh, Holy Church. John ate locust beans, not um, not. Uh, not locusts. How could we be going about hunting locusts as the food? It's locust beans and wild honey. That was the food of John. Why would why did John even go into in the wilderness? Because Herod, when he was killing um the children, remember that John's father was a high priest in Israel. So when Herod was murdering children and the angel of God appeared to Joseph and Mary to take Jesus to Egypt. But then Elizabeth took John and fled into the wilderness. We didn't see it in the gospel. I saw it in the gospel of the Holy Twelve. You know, he took John and ran into the wilderness. So when they came to kill John, when they came to kill John, they didn't see John. They asked the father, Zacharias. Zacharias. They asked him, where is your son? He didn't tell them. So they killed him between the porch and the altar. That's why Jesus said something about from the blood of Abel to the blood of Zacharias, who was killed between the porch and the altar. It was Zacharias, the father of John the Baptist, that was killed between the porch and the altar. You won't see it, but you hear when Jesus said from the blood of righteous Abel. Let me see if I can get it. From the blood... Of righteous Abel to the blood of Zacharias. Matthew 23 35. 
that upon you may come all the righteous blood shed upon the earth. From the blood of righteous Abel unto the blood of Zacharias, not Zachariah, Zacharias, son of Barakias, whom you slew between the temple and the altar. He was slain, slain between the temple and the altar. That is John the Baptist's father, whose father was slain. But you will see it in the gospel. But I was able to see it in the gospel of um, Holy Twelve because um, they asked him, Why, where, is, where is John your son? Because they were, Herod was slaying the children, innocent children. And they could not, when they didn't see John the Baptist, Jesus was already gone because he was trying to get Jesus. So Jesus was already gone. So they came to, I think I've seen Elizabeth too, when she heard it, took her infant son and went up into a mountain and hid him. And Herod sent his officers to Zacharias in the temple and said to him, where is thy child? And he answered, I am a minister of God and I'm continually in the temple. I know not where he is. And he sent again saying, tell me where, tell me truly where is thy son? Does thou not know thy life is in my hand? And Zacharias answered, The Lord is witness, if thou shed my blood, my spirit will God receive. For thou sheddest the blood of the, of the innocent. And they slew Zacharias in the temple between the holy place and the altar. And the people knew it, for a voice was heard. Zacharias is slain, and his blood shall not be washed out until the, until the avenger shall come. After the time, the priest cast lots, and the Lord fell upon Simeon, and he filled his place. You see, you won't see that in the Bible and the Gospel. So, there are many things I saw in the Gospel. Jesus did not divide bread and fish. Jesus divided bread and a cluster of grapes. The vine, fruit of the vine. And if you look at the life of Jesus, he's from um, Meshizedek, who brought bread and wine, to Abraham, you will see that there is a trace of bread and wine, trace of bread and wine. Jesus brought bread and wine at the Passover. So it's, that is the pattern of things. It was bread and the fruit of the grape, which represents wine, that Jesus shared among the 5,000 people. Not bread and fish. Jesus Sometimes, um, sometimes um, they use the symbol of a fish to represent the gospel. And when they said that disciples went to buy meat, meat is food. Like God said, every herb, every tree bearing fruit, da, 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 I've given to you as meat. And the uh, word, um, Hebrew word for meat is okla. So they went to buy meat is food. I, I have read in this gospel that James, the brother of Jesus, never tasted meat from the day of his, he was born because the family of Jesus was not eating meat. And so Jesus presented on the Passover night, he did not eat blamp. He ate bread, he shared bread, and he presented the bread as his body and the wine as his blood. So it was not um, Passover lamb. He was a lamb. So he was a lamb to be killed. Now, instead of him, because the Jews are consuming lamb, now he presented his body as the lamb, the bread, as a lamb, and his blood. He presented wine as his blood to be shed. As often, so we drink the blood of Jesus, we eat the fruit of the vine. That is, a, we eat the bread we, as a symbol of the body and blood of Jesus. Now, so Jesus was against the torture of animals and the killing of animals and shedding of blood because Jesus came to reconcile all things back to God as they were in original order. That's why they said they will not hurt nor destroy in all my holy mountain. The lion will eat straw like the lamb. The lion will lie down with the and this the, the, the bear will lie down with the da 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 a light small child shall lead them. No pray no that people can go to the wilderness and sleep. Nothing will hurt you in the wilderness. That is kingdom of Christ. That's what Christ came to bring to us. Total peace. His name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. He did not say, I did not bring salt to the earth. So, 
we if we go forward in this um gospel of the okay let, let me just finish that stop there even the temptation temptation of jesus was for not three now because in one of the temptations they brought him a, a woman and he rejected one of the temptation uh let me see okay then the devil placed before him a woman exceeding beauty and comeliness and soft wit and a ready understanding without. And he said unto him, Take her as thou wilt, for her desire is unto you, and thou shalt have love and happiness and comfort all your life, and see thy children's children. For it is written, It is not good for man he should be alone. That is the devil tempting Jesus. And Jesus said to him, Get thee behind me, for it is written, Be not led away by the beauty of woman. Yea, all flesh is grass, and the flower of the field, the grass withered, and the flower faded away, but the word of eternal, that's the word of God, endure forever. My word, my work is to teach and to heal the children of men. And he that is born of God keepeth his seed within him. That is the temptation that was removed from the the, fourth, the third temptation before the fourth one. That one was removed from the gospel. So what I'm trying to say here is, um, during the time of Jesus and during the times of, um, that is the time of the early church or before Jesus came, the gospel of Jesus has been bastardized. The teaching of God, the Torah has been bastardized. There were school of laws, there were scribes, Pharisees and all those people. Jesus said that these people had the key of the kingdom. They are not entering, they are not, they, they change the laws they we are adding and subtracting on the world bible okay jesus was also a war to them they were teaching and they were not doing what they were teaching jesus said to the jews uh, to his disciples to those who say you sit on moses seats handlers of the law scribes and Pharisees, say listen to them but don't do what they do because they teach and don't do again another thing they do is that they compass land and sea. They go everywhere, convert, and turn the person two times double child of hell. And they added and subtracted. They were adding into the unto the law of God and subtracting. So they brought the issue of hand washing. Jesus said no. It's not, Jesus said, actually said, some things that enter man's mouth will defile him, and some things don't defile. But eating with washed and unwashed hands will not make anybody unclean. Whether you eat your hand washed, because the washing hand is a ceremonial washing of hand. It's a, not because your hand is dirty, it's ceremonial, it's a ritual. And Jesus said, Eating with wash and wash and does not make anybody unclean. You know, it is the, the food you eat. For instance, Jesus, God said, don't eat pork. So if you eat pork, you don't define you because you eat unclean things. Our, God, our bodies belong to God. Our bloodstream, what we allow to enter the bloodstream. Our blood, the Holy Spirit invades the bloodstream. The physical blood and the Holy Spirit invades. That's why when you study the word of God, it invades into your bloodstream. And as the blood flows, the word you read, read study, will begin to compass all over your body. If you watch a movie, at times when you sleep, the whole thing will start rewinding. It goes into your bloodstream and try to form a character. But when you study the word of God, the word of God will dissolve, will wash you. The word washes, sanctifies. The, the truth will enlighten you, sanctify you, clean you from all unclean things. You see, so some things, there is something Jesus, God said that the broth of abominable things are in their bowels. Broth of above, that shows you that what you eat matters. The broth of abominable things are in their bowels. So, most times, some people, when you fast, no food, no water, when you throw up, things you throw up will be like, it will remind you, at times, personally, I throw up, at times, it is the fish I ate some time ago, because I see 
it will just smell it like it. Or at times it is something I ate long time ago without remembering. I see it coming out of my system like water. It's been there. And whatever is in your system speaks. The DNA speaks. So there are so many mysteries of life. Now, the reason why we have these contradictions in the word of God is because of Emperor Constantine and the Council of Nicaea. Now, I want to stop here. I want to stop here um, and then start with Emperor Constantine and the Council of Nicaea. What I've just said now is that not everything you see in the Bible is the word of God, especially New Testament. So when you see certain things, you know, I don't know what to say, but the truth is that, for instance, Jesus did not say, I did not bring peace to the earth. The sword, he didn't say that. He said, I brought peace. But when I speak, the sword follows, sword follows, which is true. The word of God is sword. When you speak, it goes sword like a sharp sword. So Jesus did not say, I did not. As a matter of fact, what we call peace is not calmness of mind. It is bringing into alignment the right things, making the group part of the lost tribe. That is peace. When something killed, killed those people in the in, in the Philistines, their law, their gods, and everything, the land rested. Why? Peace had entered. What? Israel had been liberated. So, that's why shalom means. Shh, press, crush, devour. The prince, shalom, shin, lament, mem, shin, crush, feature of the front teeth, crush, devour, destroy. Lamed, now, uh, um, shalom, lamed is authority, authority, symbol of authority, staff, mem, like. You know, something like, like a water, liquid, something that creates chaos or life or whatever. This is like a water, liquid, things like that. So, crushing the prince, the authority that brings waters of chaos as peace. Peace is crushing, consuming, destroying the authority that brings waters of chaos. And then there's peace. If you if you don't destroy something, there will be no peace. So Jesus did not say, I did not, he brought peace, but his peace is that Jesus himself was crucified, and by being crucified, he bruised the head of the serpent. He has bruised it, he has crushed it. The head of the serpent. So we have to align ourselves with the victory of Jesus. So, it is the Council of Nicaea, Emperor Constantine, that brought these uh, things we are seeing in the scripture. They brought in people to correct the scriptures, to add and subtract, to suit. Remember, he chose re uh, Christianity as the religion of the um, state of Rome. So, they have to align scriptures to suit in Roman culture. Because Christianity has become their culture. So they have to make subtractions and additions in order to, um, to make it acceptable to the society. And one more thing, Paul's scripture, Paul's version of Christianity is very good for them. All things are permissible. Submit to the Roman um, tyrants. And do not resist them. When James was saying, you know, resist the devil and he will flee. Paul would say, submit to Roman government and do not resist them. The government that was killing them, that was slaughtering, that was oppressing them, that was improvising their Christianity, the teachings of Christ. They say, submit, Paul says, submit to them. The government that were chaining the apostles says submit to them. And Christ made it clear that this government is not of this world. So 
Paul's scripture. Paul and James. One person had to go. James was the bishop of the church of Jerusalem, early church, and he was teaching the teachings of Christ. And those teachings were contradicting the teachings of Paul. Somebody has to give way. So they killed James publicly. And Paul's scriptures stood because his scriptures were good for room. You can eat food sacrificed to idols according to 1 Corinthians chapter 10. You can eat food sacrificed to idols, whatever they give you, eat. Don't, uh, whatever you see in the market, buy it. Contrary to that is the doctrine of Balaam. I want to stop here. God bless you. So what I'm trying to say here is New Testament was improvised to suit the Christianity of the Roman Empire. So everything you see there is not the right thing. God bless you. In Jesus' name. Amen.